Hello, uh, in this video, I will show you how to use uh, Refire connectivity feature. This is a new feature in build 1.12. And first I will show you, uh, so uh, using connectivity, you can activate uh, inactive or kinematic objects, uh, depends on uh, how they connected with uh, the rest of the fragments. So first I will show you the problem which it solves. So here I have a bunch of fragments here. Uh, they are all on the one root, so I have this refugee component on this root, and I set object type to mesh root here. So I don't need to apply refugee to component to every fragment, and I can have it only this root. Also, I set simulation type to inactive, and um, I have here activation by offset. So I will uh, activate them using this kinematic object, which I will use to push. So here you can see. I pushed these fragments and uh, some of them were activated, but some of them not. And as you can see, it's okay for this bottom part not to be activated, but it looks really weird when you see object like this in the air, frozen in the air. So this is a problem which you can solve using a connectivity feature. Now I will turn off. So to use this feature, first you need to uh, apply refire connectivity component. You can apply it to empty object or you can apply it to column root. Uh, later I will show you how it works uh, when it applied to object to this rigid component. So now I have this object and as you see my source type is set to gizmo. Uh, it means that I can move this object and it will show this gizmo which you can change its, um, you can change its size. So whatever in, is uh, inside this gizmo will be considered as a one group of connected objects. So this is the first thing you need to do. Second thing you need to do is go to the group of these fragments and turn on this by connectivity checkbox because otherwise it will not be connected by connectivity. So uh, now, uh, if I will start play mode now, you'll see that basically it does nothing because now everything is getting activated, even the bottom part. So again, uh, this is not what we want to do because uh, it, have, it works in this way because we didn't define fragments which will be considered as unyielding. So connectivity will start check, well, for connectivity starting from these fragments. And you can do this manually. You can select uh, some fragments and turn on this unyielding checkbox here. But since I have one rigid component on the mesh route, if I will check on this uh, checkbox, it will apply to all fragments. So this is when you can use this another component, it's called Refi Unyielding. And what it does, it simply allows you to create this gizmo, which can, you can change the size, you can move it whenever you want. And whatever it will be uh, inside this gizmo or will be overlapped by this gizmo, any object with rigid component, it will, it will get uh, unyielding uh, property on. So instead of selecting manually every fragment and set unyielding, you can just have one uh, gizmo, which you can move up and down and define unyielding property in this way. So now if I will start play mode and I will activate, okay, something went wrong and this is because Okay, this is because uh, I have this uh, connectivity. Uh, connectivity type is set by bounding box. This is the fastest way to check for connectivity. So even though it looks like these fragments are not connected, their bounding boxes still connect because of this couple of fragments, which were not. Okay, now I see it works fine. So let me increase the size. Okay, now yeah, you can fix this by uh, decreasing by offset size. So uh, the small fragments which were not activated first time also will be activated. Let's set here too. So it will need to take less distance for them to be pushed to be activated. Now you can see uh, how it activated uh, top part, but this bottom part is not activated. Some of the fragments activated. 
they try to fall down, but some fragments still stay. And I guess it looks real nice when you see that it's crumbling down slowly. And now I will select this unyielding box and I will move it upper here. So you can see that in this way you can quickly change the area which will be considered as unyielding. I also will move all, all the fragments a little bit upper. So now it will start to check for connectivity starting from this top part. So you can see uh, upper fragments has an yielding on and the bottom part did, uh, has not. So now I can, now, now you see that the top part stay in the air and bottom part was falling down and was activated. So this is how uh, works connectivity feature and I will show you a couple of other examples. Uh, in previous example, I showed how it works for inactive object, but you also can use it for kinematic object. So here my uh, pre-fragmented kind of bridge, very simplified version of bridge. Again, this is just one root with a bunch of fragments, but in this case, I set it to kinematic. I also set here activation by activator. Here's my activators, which I will use to activate uh, some of the fragments. Also, I set here by connectivity, but in this case, I have my connectivity component right uh, on this root. And now I set it to children. So in this case, uh, I don't need to, you also can see that it still show its gizmo. If I will rotate, it will show all the uh, fragments, which are right now inside this uh, gizmo. So uh, now I will, again, I will start. And just to show that these fragments are kinematic, I have a couple of boxes which will fall, which will fall to this bridge. So now I will activate these fragments. And you can see that this uh, bridge still is not falling because here my unyielding helpers, which I set here, they uh, set this fragment as in yielding and this fragment as in yielding. So this part is not falling because I have two, uh, two areas with an yielding fragments. But if I will activate some of these fragments as well, as you can see now, area which was not uh, connected uh, was activated and all the fragments, including these boxes, uh, fall down. If I would say, let's say I will remove the sun yielding box, so now only these fragments will be unyielding. So now I need just to activate these fragments and all the air, all the fragments were activated. So uh, this example just showed you that you can use it for kinematic object as well. So you can use your fragments uh, for simulation as kinematic. But then when you need, you can just uh, activate them, depends on the connectivity with this unyielding areas here and here. And another reference just show you that you can use this feature with GAN. So again, I have this uh, group of objects, basically the same bridge, just rotated. And, uh, and again, I set it to inactive object uh, and I set uh, activation by impact and by connectivity. And to define the unyielding area, I use this uh, object with unyielding component. So now I will start play mode. And I will make one shot. You can see that whole construction upper than the shot was uh, activated. And again, if I will, uh, turn on by connectivity and start play mode. Now you can see it was, uh, it uh, gun activated only the area where it shot fragments, but upper part still stay in the air. So here you can, you need to turn on this by connectivity checkbox. So all the fragments, uh, which uh, I set by 
uh, refer connectivity component on the same route and I set it to children so it will consider all the all its uh, root children as uh, one group of connected fragments and again I can move my can let's say I can create duplicate and set it here and then start play mode so first I will make one shot here then I will make one shot here I can see everything uh, in the middle was activated so that was connectivity feature I uh, hope you like it and uh, well thank you for watching